most of the data on almost all of the data we use in, in climate change impact assessments um, come from these uh, global climate models. And these global climate models, they are diverted in uh, different grids and different layers. So they have different layers for the ocean, they have different layers for the, uh, for the atmosphere, and they compute a whole range of different processes. And because they need to compute a lot of these different processes, they've actually also divided the Earth over pretty large grids to keep it basically computational and manageable. Um, so that gives a good view of the global climate, but once you want to use this data for at a local scale, there's often uh, uh, some problems. So these uh, outputs of um, regional and global climate models, which, which is the main source of the information for adaptation and impact, often has big biases. So for our impacts and adaptation assessments, we need pretty high resolution data, uh, depending on your questions. And also, they need to be unbiased, as we say. So if there is a big bias in the data, if it's too warm or too cold, too much or too little rainfall, that has an impact on the impact and adaptation assessments that we do. And it also has an impact in the trust we get from our um, stakeholders. So if we show data for the, for the past from these models, which is very different from, from what is observed, there, then you have a trust issue. So we need to be transparent about the uh, biases we have in the data, but we also need to show it in, in a way that we can gain trust. So also local uh, to, to regional extreme events are often not represented in global climate models, but they are often very important for impacts and adaptation. So that is also something we need to realize. So because of these issues, we. Uh, um, we do use uh, bias corrections and downscaling methods. <clears throat> so uh, to, to summarize it, the direct output of global climate models is often not suitable for impacts, vulnerability, and adaptation assessments because of this low resolution and these high grids in these global models and because there are important biases. So we use downscaling to get the climate information to the correct resolution. This can be a smaller grid, but it can also be downscaling to a particular weather station where you have good historic data from. And the bias correction minimizes the bias of the climate information. <laughs>